Our topic today is on a perspective overview of sequencing technologies over the generations as a summary. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos in life sciences. Let's dive into the topic for today. Genomic sequencing has been a major advancement in biomedical research, allowing us to understand the unique characteristics of individuals by reading the sequence of their DNA. This is made possible through DNA sequencing technologies. The potential of these technologies was recognized early on, with two scientists receiving the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their work in this field just three years after the development of sequencing methods in 1977. In the 1980s, automated machines could sequence 1,000 bases per day, and with ongoing advancements in technology, sequencing was applied to larger and more complex genomes in the 1990s. Progressively, DNA sequencing is applied to large bacterial genomes and the first unicellular and multicellular eukaryotic genomes and the primary driving technology was Sanger sequencing. Sanger sequencing was the main method used in research until the early 2000s and led to significant advancements such as the completion of a detailed reference sequence of the human genome through the Human Genome Project, a large international collaboration. The field of sequencing expanded dramatically, with the introduction and availability of high-throughput and massively parallel sequencing methods, also known as next-generation sequencing, which made the technology more accessible to individual labs. First-generation sequencing, starting the era of genomics. DNA sequencing technology began in the late 1970s when Frederick Sanger developed a method that used a DNA polymerase with a combination of standard and chain-terminating nucleotides, known as DDNTPs. This method caused random early termination of sequencing reactions during PCR and was run in four reactions, each with the chain-terminating version of one base. When visualized with gel electrophoresis, the fragments were sorted by length, allowing the DNA sequence to be read off base by base. This technique was groundbreaking and enabled sequencing of 500 to 1000 BP fragments. However, the original method used radioactive DDNTPs and X-rays, making it impractical for widespread use. In the 1980s, Singer's method was automated by scientists at Caltech and commercialized by Applied Biosystems. The radioactive DDNTPs were replaced with dilabeled nucleotides and large slab gels were replaced with acrylic finer capillaries. Scientists could now simply feed prepared DNA into a machine and view the results of fluorescence-based reactions on an electrophorogram. This technology which was continuously improved over the years, served as the foundation of the Human Genome Project. Today, automated Sanger sequencing is still in use, primarily in clinical labs where it is acceptable to have low throughput, higher per sample costs. Despite the success of the Human Genome Project, the cost of automated Sanger sequencing, also known as capillary electrophoresis, remained too high to allow for large-scale sequencing projects. By the mid-2000s, significant efforts had been made to reduce the cost of sequencing. This was largely driven by grants from the National Human Genome Research Institute, NHGRI, and various labs around the world tested new methods for higher throughput sequencing, using a range of concepts such as electronics, physics, and magnetics. Second-generation sequencing, short reads become fast and efficient. One of the major players in the development of next-generation sequencing, NGS, was a company called Selexa, which was later acquired by Illumina. The innovation of the Illumina platform was bridge amplification, which enabled the formation of dense clusters of amplified fragments across a silicon chip. Amplification of the original single molecule into a large cluster of many copies made it possible to detect a fluorescent signal as a single DNTP is added one at a time as sequencing proceeds by synthesis. Over time, the number of clusters 
that could be rate simultaneously grew tremendously, and Illumina Instruments became the first commercially available massively parallel sequencing technology. Other tools, such as the Ion Torrent platform, also emerged around the same time and became part of the NGS landscape. Today, NGS platforms are the dominant type of sequencing technology used, due to their ability to sequence at low cost. However, they have limitation in read length, typically producing reads of 50-500 BP in length, making them most suitable for resequencing projects, SNP calling and targeted sequencing of very short applicants. Third generation sequencing, the rise of long reads. Sanger sequencing is good at sequencing long reads, but is not high throughput, while next gen sequencing is high throughput, but cannot sequence long reads. This limitation of short reads in sequencing projects has led to the development of third generation sequencing, which aims to sequence long reads with high throughput. Third generation sequencing is useful for sequencing repetitive regions for accurate genome assemblies resolving large structural variations, and differentiating between isoforms. This technology eliminates the need for amplification, eliminates PCR bias, and allows for the identification of base modifications, such as methylation, alongside nucleotide sequence. Long reads contain more information compared to short reads and are useful in a variety of situations, such as genome assembly and detecting rare variants. In terms of third-generation sequencing, there are currently a few competing technologies. One example is single-molecule, real-time, SMRT, sequencing from PacBio, which uses miniaturized wells, known as zero-mode waveguides, in which a single polymerase incorporates labeled nucleotides and light emission is measured in real-time. Another example is the use of performing proteins and electrical detection by Oxford Nanopore Technologies, ONT. SMRT Sequencing SMRT Sequencing has several advantages, one of which is its ability to produce long reads, tens of thousands of bases long, in a single rate. These long reads make it possible to span large structural variants and challenging repetitive regions that are difficult to assemble with short read sequences. Another advantage of SMRT sequencing is its low GC bias, which allows PacBio systems to sequence through extreme GC at, at regions that cannot be amplified during cluster generation on short read platforms. Additionally, SMRT sequencing has the ability to detect DNA methylations while sequencing, as it does not require amplification. Short read sequencing produces reads 50 to 500 base pairs in length, which can lead to sequence gaps and incomplete assemblies, known as draft genomes. In contrast, highly accurate long read sequencing from PacBio produces reads tens of kilobases in length, creating overlaps which allow for the generation of complete genome assemblies. As scientists started to work with SMRT sequencing, also known as third-generation sequencing, they found it to be particularly valuable for certain applications such as the novel genome sequencing, phasing, detection of structural variants, epigenetic characterization, and sequencing of the transcriptome without the need for assembly. With advancements in technology, the throughput and accuracy of SMRT sequencing platforms have increased, making it more cost-effective for many types of projects. Currently, SMRT sequencing has industry-leading accuracy due to its hi-fi sequencing capability and it is being utilized worldwide to produce reference-grade genomes for microbes, plants, animals, and humans. Nanopore Sequencing Nanopore sequencing technology uses flow cells that contain an array of tiny holes called nanopores embedded in an electroresistant membrane. The flow cell allows for massive parallel sequencing. The flow cell is made of an electrical resistant membrane that contains thousands of tiny pores, each with a diameter of 1 nanometer. 
Each nanopore corresponds to its own electrode, connected to a channel and sensor chip, which measures the electric current flowing through the nanopore. When a molecule passes through a nanopore, the current is disrupted, producing a characteristic squiggle. The squiggle is then decoded using base calling algorithms to determine the DNA or RNA sequence in real time. Minion, made by Oxford Nanopore Technologies, was made commercially available in 2015. Unlike the large pack bio machine, the Minion is small and portable, the size of an iPod, which makes it easy to transport to places without sequencing centers. The Minion does not use dyed nucleotides like PacBio, instead, it relies on the fact that each nucleotide is a different size and has different electrical properties. Let's review quickly the mechanistics of how this technology works. Nanopost sequencing is a DNA and RNA sequencing technology that uses an array of tiny holes or nanopores embedded in an electroresistant membrane. It works by passing a strand of DNA or RNA through the nanopore, which causes a characteristic disruption to the electric current. This disruption allows for the real-time identification of each nucleotide base, A, T, or U for RNA, G, and C, as they pass through the nanopore. This makes nanopore sequencing unique as it is the only sequencing technology that enables direct, real-time analysis of short to ultralong fragments of DNA slash RNA in fully scalable formats. The advantages of real-time sequencing include the ability to access time-critical information quickly, such as pathogen identification, the generation of early sample insights and more control over the sequencing experiment. Nanopore sequencing is available in different formats, from the pocket-sized minion to the high-throughput population scale. Promothio N, allowing researchers to scale the technology to suit their experimental needs. Closing Perspectives The sequencing technologies discussed and seen across the various generations have their distinct characteristics. Depending on the application, one technology may be better than others. And it's not uncommon to sequence DNA with two techniques to combine the strengths of both. As a summary, the state of third-generation sequencing technologies work by single molecule sequencing and provide long reads with no amplification. Direct detection of epigenetic modifications on native DNA. Direct sequencing through regions of the genome inaccessible or difficult to analyze by short read platforms. Uniform coverage of the genome as they are not as sensitive to GC content as short read platforms. Overall, third generation sequencing has demonstrated its ability to improve the diagnostic accuracy of genetic diseases at the molecular level, as well as open up new possibilities for basic research and therapies. Additionally, third generation sequencing has been used to develop a time and resource effective strategy for completing short read assemblies, which allows for sufficient data to be assembled in the shortest amount of time. As for fourth generation sequencing, it is yet to be seen what advancements it will bring, but it is expected that it will largely focus on deriving key insights into the genome and enabling more efficient, effective and timely therapies.